What is up, everybody? Welcome to my new show. We are calling it 33 and a third. Maybe you know what that means. I don't know. It's about records. We're going to talk records. We're going to do record reviews and retrospectives and talk about albums that uh, either we like, love, or things that just come in the store randomly. Maybe just something I think is funny uh, that I've never even heard. I'll listen to it and tell you what I think or whatever. I'll give you some details about it. Or it's something that I just really love a lot. It's in my personal collection. But I wanted to talk vinyl. I wanted to talk records. I wanted to talk music. Uh, it's a very large part of my life. Always has been. Always will be. Um, so that being said, with my very first episode, I wanted to showcase the most important album of my life. The record that has changed my life in many, many ways and has inspired me in many ways. Uh, the greatest album that I've ever heard. That would be this beautiful gem right here. Rancid, and out come the wolves. 1995, get into it. Uh, I would show you the actual record, but this is a first pressing that's not opened, and I don't want to open it. Uh, I mean, it's not like some super crazy uh, expensive item. I just really love it. It is my personal favorite, so I don't want to open it. Um, I've got a record that I listen to, and I've also got um, iTunes and probably on downloaded on a couple of different hard drives somewhere. I mean, I've got many copies of this record. I've listened to it a lot in my life, but this is my favorite record of all time. So we're going to start my, 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 my new idea with something that I love the most and know the most about. Um, funny story, actually, I love this album so much. And I, I was so excited to do this that I got, I got nervous. I haven't been nervous on video in like a year and change, dude. Um, I had like a whole entire script that I wanted to just read word for word because I wanted it to be perfect because I, I hope that one day uh, the, the guys in this band will see this and just know that they've affected me this way and that I appreciate them so much and, uh, you know, that I can fanboy out but still not be annoying. Um, and I just kept messing it up, man. My legs were shaking and stuff. I, I was like a nervous energy. I think I was just excited because I really like this idea of this new show we're going to try to do. Uh, why not talk about music? It goes hand in hand with movies and it, that goes hand in hand with comic books. This whole place that I do, this is my dream, man. I'm living the dream. Am I stressed out and broke? Yep. But I'm happier than a lot of people that are rich. So, you know, it is what it is and I'm, I'm having a good time. But I really wanted this to be a really cool thing, man. I, I'm, I'm, I'm doing things that I really love here. So, um, but then I decided like, I was like, what am I doing, man? Like, why am I tripping right now? And so, I thought all I need is bullet points because my memory is really bad. And when I do get a little nervous energy, I'll forget things. And I shouldn't forget stuff about this album, but I will because of, you know, I'm trying to make it the right way. So I just got myself a nice little little sheet here with some bullet points on it. So if I look down from time to time, just know that I'm just trying to make sure I give you guys the right information. But I thought it was funny that I, that, that happened. I thought I would share that with you guys. Um, I hope every, Man, that noise is really loud. I apologize sincerely for the loud, loud noise of that refrigerator. Um, my goodness, it turned off and I realized how loud it was. Anyhow, so this is the album we're going to talk about today. Rancid and Out Come the Wolves is one of the greats on the punk rock, you know, scale. I, I mean, it's my favorite album, so you know what I think about it. I'm trying not to be too biased. But uh, it was released on August the 22nd in 1995 on Epitaph Records. Uh, that is the record label owned by the, I think it's the singer of Bad Religion. Maybe it's a guitar player. I'm not sure. But one of the dudes in Bad Religion, Brett. Um, the original release came with 19 songs clocked in at 49 minutes and 39 seconds. Uh, and it's something I just learned recently that they did a 2015 remastered edition for the 20th anniversary that had uh, two additional tracks on it. One was called Blast em, and one was called That's Entertainment. Excuse me, my nose itches. Ugh. But those are both really good songs. Uh, after the band signed with Epitaph back in like 91, they did a self-titled album just called Rancid, um, a hidden gem in its own right. That is a really good album when they were a three piece kind of going back to what I'm talking here. Uh, they, they, they did that album. I think it was 92, 93, 92, I believe. And then. They wanted a second guitar player. Tim approached Lars Fredrickson, and Lars declined it. I think he was playing for the UK subs at the time, and he just decided to stay in Europe. And then, uh, so they were like, okay, cool. And then uh, Billy Joe Armstrong of Green Day was hanging out with Rancid, and those guys, they're all buddies or whatever. And he helped them write a song called Radio, also a very important song to me. 
that is on a really good album. That's their second album called Let's Go. Anyhow, he helped them write that song and coincidentally played some shows with them, I believe, probably to showcase second guitar. Uh, Tim said, hey, would you like to play in our band full time? And he said, you know, I'm, I'm sticking with Green Day. We got something going here. And Tim said, ah, no worries, you know, no, no big deal. And then Lars calls him back. He's like, hey, you know, I, I thought about it. I do want to join Rancid. So he comes over and jumps in Rancid, right? That's when they come out in 94 with Let's Go, all right? Which was the first album with Lars Fredrickson, the first album is a four piece. But that started to kind of like uh, create their own signature sound. And then they created. Uh, so, so, so Let's Go came out, all right? And it had a lot of like. I mean, it had, it had some, some unexpected success and acclaim. I mean, it was a, a much bigger album than they were expecting, and it did very well. And this is in the 90s amongst that like punk rock explosion and like where all the punk rock stuff was starting to become mainstream and it was becoming more polished and, and more accessible and so there was a major label bidding war for rancid and i believe madonna's record label that she owned i think it's called maverick was also in on that man i think that's pretty funny that madonna was like oh i want to sign these punk rock guys um and so they were they were chasing after rancid and i from to my knowledge they were offered millions of dollars i don't know if it was like you know three million or if it was 30 i would imagine it's probably closer to three or something you know like that but this is the 90s dude three million dollars was a lot of money back then still is uh to my knowledge they were offered millions of dollars and they, they decided to, to turn that down not like they're you know they're not going broke on epitaph or anything but they t they turned it down so that they could stay on epitaph which was a uh independently owned record label still is the largest to date most successful for sure so that they could have complete creative control over what they produced what the albums they came out with and uh the following album was and out come the wolves hence the name outcome and out come the wolves is talking about the the major labels i believe that the title is also taken from a poem that was in the basketball diaries movie if i'm not mistaken i am so sorry my nose itches so bad right now i don't know what's going on I know it's a familiar feeling if you know what I'm talking about, but that ain't what's happening. Uh, so they stayed on Epitaph. They released the Outcome of the Wolves in 1995. Um, and then they developed their own sound at that point. And it's a, it's a very ska-heavy, ska-influenced, I would say. Not heavy, ska-influenced. I don't know, ska-heavy, I don't know. They're, they're nah, ska-influenced. Uh, punk rock and roll sound. It's a very much their own sound. Very much the, you know... Uh, you, you can hear the clash in it a little bit, I guess, but it's 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 rants. It has their own sound, and they, they've got a lot of bands that imitate and emulate their music, you know, and um, that's got to be a great feeling. But Rancid is also credited among Bad Religion, uh, The Offspring, and Green Day as you know the 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 catalyst of that '90s punk rock boom. Um, yeah, man, it, it was it was. Oh man, I remember the first time I heard this album. It was it was mind blowing to me. Uh, so there was three singles off this album that came out that got them a lot of mainstream attention on MTV on the radio. Those singles would be Roots Radicals, uh, Ruby Soho, and then Time Bomb. Time Bomb is the first song I ever heard by Rancid. I'll, ne I'll never forget this. I was listening to a Sony boombox on my stomach, like laying on my, on my carpet in my mom's house. I was a kid, man. Uh, I must have been. Dude, maybe 14, 13, something like that. I've been listening to these bands my whole life, dude. 13 years old, maybe. And I was making a mixtape, dude. I remember I was, like, listening to the radio, and the guy was saying, like, you know, up next, the new single from California, punk rock band Rancid or something like that. But I remember not really understanding that, but it sounded cool. And so I was like, ooh, you know, punk rock, what's this all about? And then that, dan, dan, dan. Dun, 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 dun. And, I, and I was like, whoa. So, you know, I hit record. I was like, what is this? And uh, I was hooked, man. I was instantly hooked. There's a lot of people that, that'll argue about which album is better, Let's Go or Outcome the Wolves. Man, look, this is my favorite album. I believe it's arguable either way. I think that Let's Go is a really, really great record. But this, top to bottom, front to back, left to right, perfection, man. This is an amazing record. Everything on this album is really, really good. Um, but yeah, man, I remember making that mixtape and just being blown away by this band and just amazed by what it sounded like. Um, but uh, so 
man, I don't know. There's, there's, oh man, it was, it was just, I don't know. It changed everything for me. This album set me in a, in a, in a direction that I wouldn't have gone otherwise, I guess. And I remember when I, when I first got, I bought on a cassette at Best Buy, my friend Stuart. I believe we got this, and then soon after this, we got MXPX Life in General and No Effects Ribbed, maybe. I can't remember exactly what albums they were, but it was MXPX and No Effects for sure, because that's all the no, the punk rock stuff we could find. But I mean, I think Stuart went more in the direction of MXPX. I definitely leaned more into Rancid. And uh, this is definitely the reason I am who I am. Is it's got a lot to do with this. These guys are amazing storytellers, uh, and I've met them multiple times. They're very nice people, man. They're just regular dudes. They're, you know, they're regular old punk rock guys, man. I, I I've talked to Lars in depth at this point a couple times. He is awesome. He's a very nice guy. Uh, I think that's really great because, in all sincerity, uh, full disclosure here, I I didn't know what to expect, man. I could have met them and they'd have been like, ugh. We're better than they're not like that at all. It's just like talking to somebody's that I walked in my store. It was incredibly refreshing, and 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 I was very happy. If they ever see this, thank you for being kind. Uh, that was also something that affected me greatly in my life. Uh, you know, a lot of people say don't meet your heroes, man. You know, <laughs> yeah, most times probably right. I was very fortunate that I met some cool dudes. A um, couple of deep cuts off this album that I I, I had to mention. Uh, I had to make myself stop because I put five on here um, <laughs> that are different from the three singles that I told you that came out. We got Maxwell Murders, the intro song. You can be anywhere and hear the introduction to this, and you'll know exactly what it is if, you've, if you're familiar with this album. Uh, it's got possibly the greatest bass solo any punk rock song ever written, all right? Um, it is a short, fast song. It's about a minute and a 39 seconds or so, like a minute 40. So I don't know, real short, less than two minutes. Uh, but it's got this bass solo that just stomps you in the head on there. Matt Freeman, in my opinion, is the greatest bass player to ever be in a punk rock band. I personally believe that he's in the discussion for greatest bass player ever. Uh, I'm sure there's guys out there doing some weird, funky stuff I don't know about. Gless Claypool, Flea, those guys. But Matt Freeman is my jam. That is that is that that dude's awesome. Uh, we got Lock, Step, and Gone. Amazing song. Uh, Journey to the End of East Bay, which talks about the time that Matt and Tim were in a different band, Operation Ivy, in the late uh, mid late eighties. Uh, beautiful song, man. Great story. Uh, there's that song Blastem that was put on there on the remastered edition. That song is really good. I have it on a on like a seven inch or something. Uh, so I, I, that's why I didn't know it was on this remastered edition. And then there's uh, my personal favorite song of all of all time, Old Friend. My favorite song of all time. There goes that refrigerator again. I apologize. In all sincerity, when I go edit this video, if that's really loud, I will refrain from sitting here in the, in the future. I just like that I was sitting in front of my my uh, records at the store with the uh, with the record wall in the background. Since we're talking about albums and all, so I am paying attention to that. I may even unplug my fridge next time. So I'm sorry, guys, if you can hear that. I, I, I didn't even consider that before I started doing this. Um, yeah, so this album means a lot to me. It's got a very good mix of ska punk rock the production is really great the vocals are clean as far as tim armstrong's vocals i love it i love it so much man um but uh man i, I can't there's nothing about this album that i don't like it, it, it's it's great i love every single song on it i know almost all the words to it from deep in my heart man this is a, a fantastic record uh i couldn't imagine something better to be talking about right now than this album uh just before i let you guys go i'll tell you about a couple of the other projects that members of rancid were in so that you can look into that if you're interested if you hear this and you like it you might want to go check out some other stuff now these don't all sound like rancid obviously but it's members of that band and maybe you'll want to support that i know that that's what i kind of do this is how i found out about a lot of my bands back in the day i would read the liner notes to punk rock albums and it would say you know we think this band this band it's usually bands they toured with and that's how i learned how to go oh well they like the bouncing souls they toured with let me hear what those guys sound like or they like to drop kick murphy's or or the casualties or whoever um but uh rancid has matt freeman on bass tim armstrong on guitar and vocals Lars Fredrickson on guitar and vocals and then during this album brett reed on the drums to my knowledge that's the only time they ever had a, a band member switch out was when they uh when brett left the band um so in the 80s like i think yeah according to the song 87 89 uh operation ivy that had tim and matt in it and it's uh, more of a 
more of a, like a ska punk, like like not like a ska with horns, not not like mustard plug or skank and pickle or, or real big fish or anything. It's more like a suicide uh, suicide machines or something. Like it's just like 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 leftover crackish. I don't know how to describe it. It's it's more it's more raw. It's it's just like a it's like I think it was three piece. It's just just a raw ska punk man. It's really good. Um, Large played in the UK subs. I always forget that. Um, then he had Lars Fredrickson and the Bastards, which was also really great. I saw them tour with uh, Dropkick Murphys. That's the first time I met Lars. He was really nice at Fitzgerald's, man. That was an awesome show. He played guitar with Dropkick because they're a guitar player. Uh, I think he had a broken hand. Um, then we had Matt, and I think Tim was in this band as well. It's called Devil's Brigade. It's like a psychobilly band. And then Lars's current like side project full-time band is Old Firm Casuals. Really good stuff. More of a... Man, I don't even know how to explain this. It's like if it's like motorhead ish. Not really, man. It's, it's it's more skinhead than that. It's like uh I don't know how to describe it, man. It's just kinda heavy. It's good. It's rock and roll. It's real good. Uh and then we have Charger, uh Matt Freeman's other band where he sings in it. I think he probably plays bass in it too. But dude, if you like motorhead, I'm not joking. If you like motorhead, go listen to this band. You will love it. It is very motorhead esque and uh I would imagine that was intentional. I, I, to my knowledge, I think that's one of the favorites for these guys. They love Motorhead, and Lars and Matt specifically. Um, but yeah, so, man, time went by quick on this one. I had a great time talking about this record. I know I kind of went all over the place. So, uh, you know, this album means the world to me. It is, it is absolutely fantastic. It's got a lot of great songs, man. A lot of great songs, a lot of classics. Uh, uh, this, this one here, uh, before I let you guys go, it this album was ranked number 368 in rock hard magazines book that they put out the 500 greatest rock and metal albums of all time that's a big deal to me man that's freaking awesome uh and then the album went gold on january 22nd of 96 meaning that it sold a hundred thousand physical copies of the album uh cassette cd mostly back then i would say some records uh but then on september 23rd in 2004 it achieved platinum status, meaning it sold a million copies. Uh, that's amazing, man. What a great, great thing that must have been. What an awesome feeling. So, anyways, I just wanted to talk about this album, give it some credit, so, uh, pull it out, show people, man, this is something that I've been listening to for a long time. It's very important to me. And it's as relevant today as it was when it was released in 95. Uh, that was, that's 25 years ago, man. Let's see. It came out in uh, August 22nd. So, this summer, this will actually hit 25 years of age. Um, I can't believe that this album is 25 years old. Uh, yeah, I love this, dude. I'm gonna keep doing this show. I'm gonna keep doing it. I'm gonna. It'll probably revolve around a lot of punk rock, a lot of hardcore, and a lot of metal. Um, but I'll talk about other things too. I know there's stuff people want to hear about besides punk rock. So, um, then I like a lot of different kinds of music. You know, I like all kinds of stuff. But yeah, I had a blast talking about talking about this record with you guys. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope there was some information that you got out of it that you like or could use and. If I made a mistake somewhere, let me know. Uh, if you got a question, please shoot me a comment. If you are interested in this and you want to support us, comments are very important. Likes and subscriptions are also very important. So please throw us that stuff. Uh, uh, it doesn't cost you anything. So that would be very much appreciated. If you want to check us out on social media or on Patreon, all that stuff is down below in the description. You can hit links down there. Uh, thank you so much for your time, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this. Go listen to Rancid. Uh, go listen to some punk rock. Go write some music. Do something awesome, man. Go buy some records. It's, it's a great thing, man. Uh, thank you so much, guys. Had a blast. Until next time, peace.